Hey guys, so instead of doing a boring Q&A post, um, I think I was convinced to do a video. Yeah, so what's this square doing, Jimmy? I don't know. Let's see. I will kill your family if this is not a code 80. Oh, wrong, uh, wrong scene, I guess. Yeah, so uh, the Q&A. Let's dig into the questions. Michael Barkley, what is the future of R Factor 2's official endurance team, actually? Well, I guess the future is that we keep on going down the path that we have laid upon us for the past seasons. Um, I think we, we, we're doing relatively well. Obviously, things can be improved. And that's what we usually spend um, a few weeks after the, the final race to to think about what's been working, what hasn't been working. Um, yeah. A few ideas how to improve um, comes into mind every season. Uh, yeah, so that's the future, I guess. Let's uh, keep doing what we're doing, just better. Henry Ahonen, have you planned to do a qualifying day for every race planned? Nope. Could it happen? Yeah. Yeah, we can. Somehow, let's see how... Uh, how we're gonna do it, but it's not it's not planned. That's for sure. Pavas ask when GTLM pack is ready and complete. Will this replace the UAD pack? I did already announce that the Oracle Seven will replace the Oracle Five. Would it make sense to change to official license cars? I'll let you uh, think about that for a few minutes. Henry continues, why track temperature is always static 29 degrees? Well, that's that's how we use live weather plugin to fetch the weather from the server, from the API. Uh, the way that works is that it's transferring the, the actual ambient temperature, not the track temperature. Um, so it can't, it can't work like that, unfortunately. We've done some different things over the past seasons. Um, it's something we need to improve, but it's not something that the the current live weather plugin can uh, can manage, and we we try to change uh, the track temperature. Didn't work out for teams. So currently, it's uh, stuck at twenty nine degrees. Let's see how how we can improve that in the future. But I do believe I answered your question well. Dennis Lynn, which one is your current favorite VC race of any season? It depends on whether I was a driver or not. As a driver, I have a couple of uh, special races. The favorite. Yeah. Season 2, race 1, Sebring. Last hour I was hunted down. I, I believe I was in second or third. I was hunted down by um, Buster's racing team, Paolo Tarolini. It was just so intense. Um, yeah, great race. As a non driving um, race, it would be. Every season at Le Mans, it just keeps getting better. Um, it's just a 
you know, it, it's a special race, special surrounding, special atmosphere. Even though it's not the real Le Mans, it still, it still has that vibe about it. Uh, and Dennis continues, have you thought about limiting the C to one server and then making pre-queue for each race to make sure the skill level is at the absolute maximum? We kind of did that in the past. Why you had to pre-queue into room one or room two. But it did work out, to be honest. You can you, you could just just hire a hot lapper and be sure you get into the, the top room. So in the sense how we did it in the past, we can't do that in the future. But we can do other things. Um, Neil Heatley, which non-DX11 compatible track would you like to use in the future if it became DX11 compatible? I just have one track that I would like to have in DX11. It's a fantasy track from R Factor 1. I have it in R Factor 2, though it's not at all made ready for anything. It's a Rattlesnake Point. Uh, great track. Look at El Milio. As we recently saw, this is now the new official endurance championship of Far Factor 2. It's not new, we've been official for two seasons now. Um, this lets me think that there will be more official content present on this championship for the next couple of years. So we already saw the new VIP content like the GTL Impact. Are you and I as I working or planning? also to implement some new tracks. It's not just tracks or cars, it's it's everything to be honest. It's um, yeah, everything. But yeah, new tracks, definitely. We're gonna use new tracks over the next few years. We're gonna new, use cars, we're gonna use everything. But it's not ISI, by the way, it's Studio 297. Um, Edmund, when are you going to show us how you race for a change? Is that a challenge, Ed? If it is, I'm game. Let's, um, let's plan an event after uh, after Le Mans and see, uh, see how I can compare. So, Ude, or You'd, I don't know. If the next VE season is part of our factor two, I guess we can't run unofficial tracks, can we? Well, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of talented modders out there, a lot of um, non licensed tracks that are good, like Istanbul. We can if you would want it to. But as you've seen this season, we've kind of narrowed it down to only some tracks. I like official tracks. And I think most people like those a bit more than the modded tracks. Again, don't get me wrong, a lot of modded tracks out there is good. But there are some well, some tracks that aren't, especially those, yeah, no, a lot of tracks aren't, and a lot of tracks are. Let's just leave it at that. Um, Lazarus Philippagos, what classes are going to be used next year? And if you wanted to change one big thing, what would that be? What classes are going to be used? Um, LMP and GT cars, obviously. Um, change one big thing. That's a hard one. I don't know. World 
piece, I guess. That's not not gonna happen anytime soon. Um, Henry asks, can you say when your demods are updated, like windscreen rain effects, mixture setting for protos, hybrid boost, and David adds vipers? Um, it's not my place nor job to announce anything from UAD. Um, that's, um, yeah, that's not my, my thing to do. So I have talked with Alice and, uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Evan O'Larry? What has been your favorite season to host watch? Well, heading into season 10, um, or actually mid season nine, I knew this would be the, the hardest seasons to host ever. Um, in 2017, I was offered to move because the the job I had uh, was going to be moved. So I knew I'd, I had to do something. Um, and yeah, in, um, in November, I had to take this temporary job, um, which was not that suited for anything. Uh, I had to get up at midnight and I had to work until I got home. <laughs> um, and it was between noon and 2 p.m. And it was a one hour drive back and forth. So even though I, I knew how hard it would be to run the first part of season 10, um, I kind of had an idea what was going to happen in 2018. So looking back, it still, still is my favorite season, season 10. I think every season we've been able to to learn things from the past season and improve. Maybe not by a huge margin, but um, but I believe it will keep on improving and keep on being better. So yeah, season ten. Though a long explanation on that, but uh, yeah, season ten. What is your favorite not frequently asked question in the uh, SRC forum? When will you release the track? No, I don't know. Um, I don't know. That's um, that's a hard one, Lucas. Um, Well, I like I like questions. So I don't know. Um, Van der Waude, what's your favorite team in SRC to work with? Like, do, do you mean the uh, a team like DNS, DHR, Simtech? I don't have a favorite team like that. I do have a favorite team of uh, of commentators, of uh, admins, of developers. So that's my favorite team to work with. I think we, we've we've built something special here. So I. Uh, I like the people around. 
So, yeah. When will you get some good sponsors so you can reward with some prizes to the winning teams? I think that would attract a lot of people. Yes, I'm sure of that. As explained before, heading into season 10, it was pretty hard. Um, and I kind of dropped that approach. I did start something. Um, I wasn't able to finish that. Um, um, yeah. Let's see if we can uh, improve that next season. I think we can. What makes you enjoy spending so much time of your free time so others can have nice races? Well, it, it, it kind of went back to season two when I was uh, doing both things. I just enjoyed the racing. I enjoyed the... Um, Getting to know how the other drivers would react to to you, and learn how to navigate traffic, um, learn how to predict who's coming up and who's doing what, and yeah, I like that. And that simply spiraled into it wasn't I wasn't able to do both things. Um, and I wanted this experience to to other people, so yeah, that's it. I, I I like to host races. I like the structure. I like to set up things. Yeah. So I hope that that's an okay answer to that question. Um. What's the biggest challenges of stewarding a race? What features would you like RF2 to add to get it more, to make it more in depth? The biggest challenge well, it's, it's been for the past race or so, it's been a lot easier having um, got this new uh, broadcast machine and being able to to review the incidents again. Um, before I had to go to some kind of compromise uh, to ruin the actual broadcast by going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth on a replay. Um, so that was a challenge back then. It, it isn't any, anymore. Um, and also staying awake, to be honest, while um, working th those crazy hours, coming home and having to do a 12-hour race or 8-hour race, it, it was a challenge. Again, it won't be a challenge anymore. Um, not in, in the same extent, at least. What features? Well, there's, there's a few features I'd like. And uh, I think we're going to get them uh, eventually. Let's, uh, let's see how we can improve all of this. Arvin asks, since you're now a part of Studio 397, do you have any influence to vote, decide for future content in R Factor 2, like strong endurance culture here? It is not complete without VLN. Please, pretty please, we need high quality North Slifer. Um, well, I have an influence on how competition is, uh, is being set up. Um, but the good thing is that I'm not the only endurance junkie in Studio 397. So. Let's see. Let's see how how the future uh, is like on that on that part. That's that concludes the Discord questions. Let's just uh, head on over to uh, Facebook and have a look on the questions. There. Nick asks, "Will you be keeping the three dimension system in season 11?" 
if you have the same entry numbers, or will you be looking at streamlining? Both. Is that a valid question, uh, answer? I, I, we need to streamline things, that's for sure. Um, how are we going to do it? Well, let's, let's, uh, let's see how this uh, goes in the next couple of months. We obviously want to improve things. We obviously want to be have as many drivers as we can because it's important that people get this experience, at least from my point of view. Yeah. So, but we also need to to think about things how how things can be improved. So that's um, that's a vague answer, isn't it? I guess. Um, is VEC going to be going to switch UAD mods for the official content? Yeah, you, you might want to guess that answer, I guess. Again, I I did announce things already, like the Oracle 7, Oracle 5 switch, and that actually answers the next question. Will LMP2 have performance boost and working hard t combat tires? We're going to use a different LMP2 car, so that's that's pretty obvious, and that's actually why we didn't want to have well wanted to have people spending time on a on testing that car like mid-season. New things were going to happen, so uh, yeah. Are Ender Racers LMP2 cars being considered for Season 11, given the variety and choices compared to UAD and 0397? Well, we can always compare quality and quantity. I'm not saying Ender Racers is just quantity. It's a great mod. But just because you can choose between two engines in a car doesn't make it anything more appealing to me, to be honest. Um, you also need to remember that the more models you put in uh, the game, the more calculations and the more power would be needed from the actual um, computer. So, yeah, we're not going to use the, it, it, uh, edit it in VEC, we're gonna, probably going to use it for something, because it's a good mod. Uh, is it likely and very positive that your D mod is going to be replaced? Yes. What do you enjoy most about being head admin, and what is the most annoying thing you have to deal with? Well, I, I generally like things, like to build things up, I like to structure things, I like to pretend that I know people are having a good time with the things we set up. Um, the most annoying thing is Well, that's, I don't know, annoying questions, though annoying questions can still be positive because it just shows people care, I guess. And Alexander continues, also, what are your plans to promote in broadcasting the league as an eSport? 
I think moving ahead, uh, looking back, I think we've done a great job broadcasting, um, presenting ourselves professional as an a valid esport thing, promoting. Yeah, I haven't thought about that to be honest. It's it's something that we need to do, but not just with VEC, but with the official competitions. Um, but I think actually Marcel did a nice job explaining how sim racing is the perfect esport. Um, look at that DevCon video if you haven't seen it. Um, are there any plans to offer prizes for race, championship winners, driver of the race, season, etc.? If not, what are the reasons behind that decision? Um, well, it's a, it's a pretty easy answer. A reason? Money. You need to consider what you put, what you invest as a driver into uh, into SRC. So for 15 euro, you get a server that is online 24-7, 365 days a year, or well, at least um, 360. Um, <coughs> so We could opt to do something else and uh, not have the servers online all the time and uh, and cramp things up. But I I don't like to to play risk with anything. It's just not how I'm I'm working. Um, again, money you need to. When you put in 15 euros, um, you need to remember that on top of the six dedicated servers, like the six different machines we have, we still need to pay plugins, forum, plugins on the forum, we need to pay coders if something goes wrong, you need to pay pay developers um, if we need something special done. Uh, um, yeah, there's, there's, there's lots of things. So the reason behind it is basically money. Compare it to another game you might pay 15 euros uh, a, a month to do. Um, There's, there's two options, well, there's more, but two obvious, obvious options. Um, one would be to increase the season pass. I don't like that. And two would be to make some kind of deal with a sponsor. Obviously, two would be the, the way to go. Uh, yeah, let's see. It, it, there's no decision to not do this. It's just, it's just how it is, unfortunately. But this this season, I'm gonna send send out some trophies, some nice trophies, and uh, let's see if if we can do better next season. So the final question, JT Tammy. <laughs> Can we get the Delta Wing for next season? Nah, nah, JT, we're not going to do that. Um, I guess that that concludes concludes the uh, the Q and A. I hope you guys got some uh, info that you wanted. Um, I'll be doing a Le Mans special. Um, like I did for Sebring last season. Um, 
Also, we're probably going to do something around the qualifying. Um, so, a few videos, a few things are coming up soon. Enjoy. Start practicing for Le Mans. And uh, see you soon.